today it's just an exercise tomorrow it'll be for real a wildlife photographer has fallen and is seriously injured deep in the river gorge below us he can't move how can he be rescued well this woman needs to find the answers she's penny brockman an incident controller with the central beacons mountain rescue team in this program you'll see her and three mountain rescue teams put to the test This week on Put to the Test, the Central Beacons Mountain Rescue Team has designed a scenario to test their own members and those of other teams. The casualty is real, That's a it. team member who's been briefed to respond in as realistic a way as possible. Right, yeah. The ground here is rocky and slippery. A misplaced step could spell disaster. For the casualty, it's a terrifying thought. Injured at least two miles from the nearest road. It's a race against time, a tough challenge for the teams. Well, Peter Howells is the team leader with the Mountain Rescue Team. Peter, what's the scenario today? The scenario today, we'll have um, someone who has fallen 20 feet off the rocks. Uh, it's a, a, an occurrence that does occur in this area four or five times a year, different incidents. Um, unfortunately, we sometimes have people who are very seriously injured in this area. And they're a long way from help. Well, let's make the call. Let's put them to the test. Let's do that. Hello, a mountain rescue, please. See, very badly injured. We're about 300 yards downstream from the Scooter Iver waterfalls at Ostrovechte. You on your way? Great. Can you be party leader? Right, OK. The mountain rescue teams are voluntary organisations on call around the clock. Leading the rescue today is Penny Brockman. Penny's a chartered accountant. She's been a team member for years. But this is the first time she's been in command of a major rescue. My job will be to coordinate the activities at the casualty site. So I will brief the party as we go in on what we need to do and prepare themselves for the jobs at hand to carry out an effective evacuation of the casualty. Responding to their pages, team members leave their jobs and families, and soon there are enough people for the second Land Rover to set off. The team's Bedford control truck is also being scrambled for the emergency. What time did Echo go? Five minutes before us, there. Yeah. Right, okay. The rescue teams from Brecon and Bregen are already on their way. Right now, the first team, the Central Beacons team, uh, have responded. They are in the local area. They're at the roadhead about two miles away. Uh, we've heard that on the radio system. Two 150 foot ropes, oxygen. Entonox, casualty bag, first aid kit, and we need to ensure we've got three radios. Have we got any more information about the casualty? With the second Land Rover now at the roadhead, Penny can organise the first party that will make the long walk to where they suspect the casualty might be. We don't know what we're going to find, but we're basing the equipment we're taking in on the experience we've had in Estravelta. Estravelta is a waterfall area. It's usually people with leg, maybe spinal injuries. So the kit we're taking in is to treat people with those type of injuries. Right, OK, let's get the equipment and let's go. What we have now is uh, a time delay because of the distance from the roadhead into here. Right, they've got to come in on foot. They have to come in on foot, and they will be carrying quite a lot of equipment into this location. And that's the only way to get to get the stretchers and things they need in here, is it? There's no way of getting a helicopter anywhere near in this area. It's because of the tree canopy. It's so dangerous. Now, Penny's being put to the test. How has she, she fared in this first half an hour? It looks as though um, that she is now in position. All the radio calls are quite routine going back and forth, and she's well on track to accomplish the first part of the exercise. Morlose control, control, Morlose 505, over. Okay, you're okay, come to the shore, okay. 
over. Update, we are now at the big rock. Uh, we will leave 515 to act as link, over. Yes, sir, thank you for that link. Uh, control standing by. Communications in the Estraveste Gorge are notoriously difficult. The team will leave one member to relay radio messages between the control truck and the rescue parties. Uh, for information from uh, now onwards, uh, if you could link through me to uh, main party, over. During the walk to the rescue site, Penny will need to work out her plan. Can you tell me what equipment they have in the party, over? We have, in fact, got people who can now carry in any extra equipment. The initial party, as I said, will have first aid equipment. The second party will have brought in the usual things that we need for this area. But if there's anything specifically needed, they do need to keep one party back to bring that last equipment in. Right. The beauty of the gorge draws many visitors, but each year there are up to half a dozen serious accidents here, some resulting in death. I do want Brecken to look after the river because of their water skills expertise. Penny has just requested that the Brecken Mountain Rescue Team, who have got a number of specialists in water skills, they are going to look after the waterfalls area and make an assessment of which is going to be the best way to take the stretcher back out. We've had three days of rain. That, that river's pretty that, swollen, isn't that it? That river is pretty swollen. Right, guys, we want to go down this um, path here because what we've been told is the lower path. Can you start shouting just mountain rescue? Because we don't have a name of the casualty at the moment. Just say mountain rescue, mountain rescue. Pause to wait to see if we get a response. It's very noisy at the moment. So if we could have that, that would be great. OK, let's proceed down. Be careful, it's very slippery. Mountain rescue! Remember the... The rescue teams have got to cross this very, very difficult uh, terrain. There's a swollen river there, and all the time, the clock is ticking. It may seem obvious, but shouting is often the best way of contacting the casualty. It's very important that the person who made the 999 call, in this case, me, me stays with the casualty, isn't it? Yes, goes back to the casualty location. The mobile phones in this area work in very, very few places. And as you saw, you had mm. to climb right up. well up to the top. Uh, to get above the tree canopy, then return to the casualty location mm. so that you can be in position to say, this is where we are. Mountain rescue! Over here! You can just hear voices through the undergrowth, but I, I can't see anything just yet. Just through the trees there, we can see the first advanced party carrying all the equipment. Over here! Right, OK, guys. Casualty found. Can you please go up there and see what we've got and then radio me back down, yeah, over. No right, can we do a equipment dump? Yeah, take first aid, that's first aid. Right. Trig, can you set up a safety line? Yeah. Penny needs Link, to let everyone else know about message, the find. Message, 505, over. Uh, sit rep, casualty found. Have sent two first aiders in and setting a safety line. Once we know what we have got, I will start allocating new responsibilities, over. Well, so they're finally here, Peter. It's a good sign. It's a good sign for the casualty. They're cautiously picking their way up here. It's, it's, it's a difficult terrain, isn't it? It is. We've got lots of boulders. Uh, we've also got very, very loose um, ground. We've got lots of mud mixed in with the boulders. And um, so we've now got three people here. They are carrying the first aid kit. Right. So they've got him in a collar. Is that a precaution or do they know that his, his neck is, is injured? Anyone who has fallen from a height always has to be suspected as having a neck injury and a spinal injury. Hence, we will, we will eventually see them put them into the spinal splint, which is a vacuum mattress. I'm going to be touching this barred leg now. You tell me... Ah, 
shirt in, but they're uh, John, is there? John's certainly yeah. getting yeah. into his role as an injured Four person, giving the rescuers Four realistic strong. reactions. Top bit. Just the top bit, is it, John? All right. OK. Five zero five from my first aid. Go ahead, over. Uh, Antinox said that was a priority, over. Affirmative. Do you want the oxygen pack, over? Affirmative. We can hear Penny. For the first time now, she's getting vital information back on the state of the casualty. Yes. And that's going to be crucial, isn't it, in, 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 to help her decide what she's got to do next? Indeed. This is the pressure decision time now, because she has resources. We've got the initial people in. She also has equipment and also uh, a number of extra people. Now, the assessment is, and the balance always is now, what do you do with all of the resources that you know? Uh, can you give me an update of your location, over? So, for zero one, be advised, we are members of Zebra One Party, over. With over 30 people here or on their way, carrying a range of rescue equipment and medication, Penny now faces the daunting task of organising them into an effective team. At the footpath near the waterfall, over. All these skilled people would be useless without effective leadership, and the sheer amount of information Penny must handle one, can seem one. overwhelming. Yeah, for your information, Zebra One was using my radio at that location. He is now left, and uh, he's left radio comms with myself, over. Um, OK, what I'm just trying to do is ascertain where all the parties... Um, it could link, could find In a real situation, the survival of the casualty will depend on Penny having the right information and making the right decisions. How important is it that, that Penny keeps a, a cool head at this sort of point? It, it is very important. Um, <clears throat> in, in terms of the amount of information that you're taking in, and just look at the number of people that are here that need direction. Um, can you advise me who will be setting up uh safety across the river and also to take um the stretcher up the track over well done zebra one if you can um leave enough people to for that jobs and bring more people in with the other first aid equipment, ropes and stretches, and update me with how many people are going to come in, over. Affirmative, so what we're just saying, so I've got an understanding of what's going on. Um, <coughs> the, we've got Morley's link at the big rock. Um, there's six people left near Skudaira, and all other personnel are coming into the area, over. So, Dave, all other personnel are making their way towards your location, carrying the extra kit that they had, over. Well done. What I'd like um, is the medic with you, if they could come as quickly as possible um, so that they can do a casualty assessment, over. He's had an update over the radio about how many resources that, uh, that, that are behind her. So she, she does have a very good idea of the complete picture. Um, we have an incident uh, controller at the control point who can provide update, advice, further equipment, can call extra resources if necessary. But Penny is now making the decisions of what's going to happen here, the evacuation, and then the evacuation from this location all the way back out.
Back at the rescue scene, incident controller Penny Brockman is briefing the medic. It's possible pelvis and femur, so if you can head up. We have got a safety line. Thanks, Sharon. Is this worse or better than, than Penny thought, the situation here with the casualty? I, I would uh, think that this is worse than what she thought it was going to be. The, the problem here is that we have a slope to evacuate from, whereas in previous exercises that certainly we've done, it's been a haul from a lower position to an upper position. This is going from a height down to the footpath. Have we got any more ropes in this party? So we haven't got any more ropes at all? Right. Okay. Getting him off off this hillside is, is, is just the beginning because it's, it's a long haul out of here, isn't it, all the way? It, it is. That's why we have a lot of personnel ready to do that. What we haven't seen here is that there is another team of about 12 or 14 people at the waterfall who are at the moment preparing the way for the stretcher to go across the water. The Brecon team has trained to work safely in fast-flowing water. Now, Peter, what's the situation up here and, and down there? OK, what, what's happening up here now? They've stabilised as far as they can with the, the equipment that they have. The casualty, they've got uh, a warm wrap over the top of him. They've put a spinal splint on him. They've made an assessment of what injuries they found initially, and they have him now on a painkilling gas called Entonox. Um, the incident controller is, is actually on the way up to us now. She's coming up to make an overall assessment of both the scene here and what's got to happen to get the casualty all the way back down. Hi, Sharon. Yes, fine. Um, just give me an update. There's, there's a party coming in. You tell me what you want. Um, head traction splint and the back mattress. Right, OK. Link, link, 505, over. Now they know how seriously injured the casualty is, how, how important is time in all this? Will, will, will Penny be clock-watching? Yes, there is always blood loss with an upper leg injury. That will send him deeper into shock. Now, he's already been here a number of hours because all the casualties that happen in this area, it takes hours to get to them. But there's also a pelvic injury. And the problem with a pelvic injury, you, you don't know what's going on inside. Can you still feel your toes? Can you give us toes to squeeze for me? Between down there, all right? Tell me if you can feel that. Right. Yeah, feel your right leg? Okay. Okay. Uh, message for control. Presently, the casualty is stable, um, but we do need equipment to come in as quickly as possible. Over. Uh, control, uh, the second party uh, with an ailing splint and a front part is on its way to your location. Over. Peter, another team arriving here. What are they? What are they here for? They've now brought in the. Uh, splinting equipment to splint the casualty ready for putting on the stretcher. And so this is, this is, this the, is the first half of the stretcher here. coming up here. Comes up in two halves and we're going to assemble it. Right, guys, I want everyone to listen to what Sharon's going to say because if we all listen, it only needs to be done once. So, okay, right, Sharon, shout. Right. We're going to get him onto the back mat first to stabilise his spine. If we put the bell together, and then we can move him onto the belt once his spine is stable. Amanda, can you come here, please? Reset. Three and left. One, two, three, left. Peter, there's a pump being used here. What, what on earth is that? They're actually sucking air out. The vacuum splint yeah. is comprised of um, a, a lot of little uh, foam bubbles. And when you take the air out, the whole thing becomes rigid. Down. Down we go. Down towards you. Can you just tell the casualty what's going on, please? Just lowering onto the stretcher. Okay. Well, 50 feet above us, Peter, they're starting to lower the stretcher. They've attached um, the ropes onto trees through uh, friction devices called figure of eights. And that'll come down now nice and gently, very, very controlled all the way down without bumping it so that the casualty has the best ride possible. They'll bring it down here, presumably, and then along this, this track. This is, this is going to be tricky, isn't it? This, this is going to be tricky. The, the trickiest bit is that little rock step that's there. Yes, there's rocks is. coming down yeah, here. Yeah, there are rocks well, coming down. That's why we're well out of the way. Right, everybody in front, please, now. Safely down, the next obstacle is the treacherously slippery path. We're coming into 
slippery area now. Do you want to go into hand over hand? Okay, keep talking to the casualty. Anybody can talk to the casualty. Peter, they're approaching the river, now, and we've just crossed behind the waterfall. Well, it looks as if they're going to opt to, to, to make it across the river. Why is that? Behind the waterfall is very, very narrow. It, it's quite a, a, a small ledge, and then you have the water. Not only that, but there's a terrific amount of spray right behind it. Coming across here is much safer. Right, guys, listen, please. Right. What we're doing, we're going to now hand over responsibility to Brecken to evacuate the um, casualty across the river. What's happened now is that the team that's done the lower and the carry up the footpath have now handed over to the team that made all these preparations. They are the specialists at the moment in dealing with water. They're going very cautiously. It's very slippery down here, isn't it? It is very slippery. In a real accident, the casualty would have been cold, wet and in pain for several hours, but it's a fine balance between speed and the danger of causing further injury. Slow, slow down. And these guys are now going ahead to get into the narrow section, which is very, very difficult. And the only way to deal with the stretcher at that point is not to move with it, but actually to pass it hand to hand. We can just see the, the stretcher coming into shot as they're pulling it round the yep. path, hand over hand, they're passing it. Yes. Uh, they're keeping a close eye on the casualty, of course, all along, aren't they? All along, yes. Every so often, every time that they stop, somebody would be talking to the casualty, making sure that they were OK and actually monitoring what's going on with them. OK, if you've got, have you got enough people to proceed on? Passing the stretcher hand over hand is exhausting work, but the steep and narrow path leaves no alternative. Well done, Cap. Um, can you ask Control whether there are any more Hill members? That's Control, and if there are, if they could proceed to help with the um, traffic evacuation area. Out of the trees at last, all that's left is the long walk to the road. Peter, the last, the last step in this whole test, getting the casualty finally now. The into the ambulance, ambulance, yes. And on its way to hospital. Yes, indeed. They've had a long walk out and then they were transferred at the roadhead, which is only accessible by four by four. So they've driven back down here a mile now to where the county ambulance is waiting just behind us. The three volunteer mountain rescue teams have completed their task and the casualty is transferred to the waiting ambulance. An exhausting afternoon, some welcome refreshment. Yes. Uh, you were put to the test. How yeah. do you think you uh, measured up? I think I did quite well. Um, lucky because I have a lot of good people around me. There are times which were difficult. Tougher than you thought? No, I take it in my stride. <laughs> I take it in my stride. Well, let's find out how you really did. Peter, how did she do? <clears throat> well, as we were discussing on the way through, um, Penny has the uh, ability. What we didn't know today was whether it would all come together. Uh, I, I, we've tested a number of different things today, some of them quite difficult for Penny to handle. It was the first time she'd managed an incident of this size, and she has done really well. Thanks very much. Well, it was just an exercise, but every year this gorge is the backdrop to four or five real-life emergencies, and it's then that all the training and the exercises pay off and save lives. From all of us on the programme, until next time, bye-bye.